Rishida, I would like to talk about your young early days in youth theatre, you know, your experiences having worked there and then your shift to Bombay. Well, I joined New Theatres in 1945 in the processing laboratory. My ambition was to be a cameraman, so I thought that would be a good start because I'd learn the basics of photography, processing. From there, it was an institution, you know, in New Theatres, there are no freelancers. Laboratory. Oh. Tripping, na? Yes, tripping. Hey, baby off kar. Put a baby, baby ka plug nikalo pehla. Yeah, it's a good baby. Drip ka overload? Huh? Sorry, Rishita, we'll have to start all over again hmm. with your days in the new theatres. Followed by a shift to Bombay. When I joined New Theatres in 1945, my ambition was to be a cameraman. So first I joined the laboratory because I thought I would have basic trainings um, which is related to uh, photography. But uh, I didn't get an opening in the camera department. Uh, New Theatres was an institution by itself. There was no freelancer. Everybody used to work in a particular department. It has his own cameraman, own assistant, everything belonged to new theatres, even own musicians. So after a few years working in the laboratory, I was shifted, Vimalda, I met Vimalda, Vimalda brought me to editing department. So that is how my real career started. I joined the editing department as an assistant. And then after a few months, Vimalda told me if you take permission from Mr. Sarkar, I'm making a film outside new theatres, you can edit it. So he gave me the first break, I took permission and edited that Bengali film, that was my first film called Tathapi, where I made friendship with Ritik Ghatok and Shobha Shen, married with Pearl, uh, all these people. And we had a very big groups, Mrinal Shen, Sharil Chaudhary, Ritik, Sapar Shen, Utpal. So that is how my career started in new theatres. They started off two things, I can see. One, your association with the Bimalda and your editing. The thing first, I would... Well, the Bimalda brought me to the editing department. He was instrumental in bringing me to the editing. And then he gave me the first break. And whatever I am today is due to Bimalda. I learned everything from him. Then he brought me to Bombay in 51 as his film editor gave me the opportunity to write the script of Dobi Gazamin and I was also assisted him as his chief assistant director in Dobi Gazamin. So everything I learned about filmmaking, I learned through Vimalda. Uh, is there any uh, you know, incident that you can remember in your process of learning, you know, something which you hold dear today? Well, the first thing I learned, you have to keep an open mind, keep an open mind in working. Vimalda was a fantastic person in that respect. He used to listen to everybody, but he used to make his own decision. So that is what I first learned from him, that you must keep an open mind. You must not think that whatever you are thinking, that is the best thing. Of course, you should do whatever you think is the best. So even editing, same thing used to happen in, uh, say, while editing Dobi Gazamin. I had lots of cuts from day shot to night shot. or. I didn't like, you know, the fade out and fade in, like the screen coming and going up in the stage, coming down and getting up. So I did lots of experiments like that. Everything he approved. He had an open mind. I said, if I make a fade out, then a fade in, it will slow down the whole thing. Why not fade out and a cut? Or why not cut and a fade in? And why day shot, night shot, there should be a dissolve? Why not cut to cut from day shot to night shot? He had an open mind, I showed him what I intended to do. He approved, he said, yes, you're right, you do it. So that is, that is how he used to encourage your creating ability. And he was fantastic in that respect. Besides, uh, though, because you mean, which is the other film of uh, Bimal Das that you really cherish today? Well, uh, almost all his films, uh, till Shujata, means um, Bombay Talk is Ma, Bab Betty, Biraj Bo, Yudi, Nokri, Modumati, Devdash, all 
Gautam Buddha, or Gautam Buddha, of course, he didn't directly produce it. All these films I edited. Now, uh, as your work as an editor, you know, you have really acquired, a, you have all throughout acquired one reputation as an editor who knows what exactly what he wants, and you know, you have managed to salvage a lot of films, you managed to, you know, help out a lot of people, mm, give them... No, I don't want to take that credit. It is the job of the film editor to help the director, assist the director in what he wanted to say. Sometimes, see, most of the times, editors, they don't sit in the screenplay. So they have a fresh mind. When they see the whole thing, they can decide. Uh, that is their profession. That, you know, this, is, this part is becoming slower. Why don't you change it? Editor should have the basic knowledge of uh, script also. So I can't say I have salvaged. I have helped the director in pointing out that I think these parts ca can be removed or this scene can come earlier, so it will get the necessary momentum. But I don't claim to salvage any film. As an editor, were you on the sets, uh, you know, of the films that you edited? Did you take part in, uh, you know, the directorial uh, bit of it? Yes, in though, because I mean, I, apart from writing the script and uh, the editor, I was one of the chief assistant director also. So, um, I knew that what you were shooting not necessarily fit for editing. Uh, then we would come to your uh, debut film as a director, that is Musafir. Hmm. Uh, that, I believe, was your own story with screenplay by Ritik Ghatak, uh, Ritik Ghosh. Me uh, and Ritik Ghatak. Ritik Ghatak and myself, we wrote the script. The story idea was mine. You see, I owe everything to Bimalda as far as learning of filmmaking is concerned. But I every, owe everything to Devip Kumar as far as my career as a director started. The whole credit should go to Devip Kumar for my directorial career. Because it is he who insisted that I must take to direction. And I was constantly refusing. So one day he asked me, I used to stay just by the side of Mohan studio, that what type of film you want to make? You must make a film. I said, look, this room where we are seated, this, before me there was another tenant, probably there was a death. Probably the couple made love here. Probably somebody died here. Probably they quarreled. All these four walls, you know, if they could speak, they knew everything what happened here. So I want to make some three short stories linked by a flat where three different tenants they come, and the story should part into birth, marriage, and death. We call Janam, janam Mrittu, Bibaha. These three episodes. So he looked at me, smiled, he said, to Marega, because this type of film, short stories then don't work. But you make it, I'll work free. I want to see you as a film director. That's because Dilip Kumar was a phenomenon at that time. Because he helped me, I could launch my career as a director. At that time, which was Dilip uh, Saab's uh, film at the height when you made your movie? All those films, you know, uh, Devdas. He was absolutely almost one-man industry other than Raj Kapoor. It was like that. And he was very affectionate. He saw to it that, you know, I shed up that complex and I start directing film. He saw to it. And what was his reaction after your film was complete? Well, um, the film didn't do commercially well because people thought that Suchitra Sen will meet Dilip Kumar. They never met. Or they thought Kishore Kumar will have some scenes with Suchitra Sen. They never met. These are three different short stories. So the film didn't do um, box service uh, very well. But it established me, it got a national award, certificate of merit. And all my friends in the film line, they were very much impressed, like Raj Kapoor, Balrashani, when they saw that film. And that launched me in my career, though it didn't do commercially well at all. It was too ahead of the time, because these short stories, people didn't accept them. Did you uh, still think that you should carry on with your idea of short stories, or did that deter you in any way, you know? No, I have. You see, you go on experimenting at different phases of life. You don't stick to one thing. After um, Musafir was made, I made Anadi with Raj Kapoor, Nutan, Motilalji, and others. And it was a very big hit. So the next film I made was absolutely a different type of film called Onuradha. Uh, that is also because of um, Balraj Sahani who came forward. He said, work, I will free for you. I was planning to go to Calcutta and make that film because I didn't find people very enthusiastic about that, that type of subject here in Bombay. So for the last time, volunteer, I took a newcomer called Leela Naidu and Hemant Kumar's daughter and Obi Bhattacharya. I took Pandit Ravishankar as my music director. 
So after Anadi was a very big, Anadi got President Silver Medal. And my third film was Onuradha with Pandit Ravi Shankar, uh, Bardashani, it got President's Gold Medal. So you know, I got a very meteoric, luck helped me, I got a meteoric rise. First film got Certificate of Merit, second film got President's Silver Medal, third film got President's Gold Medal. And since then, I'm in the jacket. I can see that you really worked at the time when you know everybody was more like a family and helped each other's careers and you know helped each other too. It was a t tremendous uh, feeling those days, you know. Like you know, in college days, you like a particular professor, you wait uh, when his class will come. It was like that. We used to wait when our shooting will st will, day will come. Everybody used to come in time, and it was just one family. All of us used to sit in one row, all with technicians and all. Te uh, I mean, workers and used to have our lunch. It was a fantastic experience those days. And how people helped me when I made my first film, right from Suchitra Sen to Nirupa Rai to Usha Kiran to David Saab. Mm, all these people, how they helped me when I made my first film. Even when I made, uh, along with Anuradha, I made a film called Mem Didi. That was probably Tonuja's first uh, full length film. She was hardly 14 years old. And I had three elderly people as my main characters David Saab, Jayant Saab, the Tamzad Khan's father, and Dali Dawai. These three characters. It was such a fun to make a film because it's one family. We all used to contribute all our knowledge in making up that film. And Nutan went on to become quite an actress, but in your very first film, how did you see her potential? Nutan, you see, if I start praising Nutan, you'd all say, because she is no more, I'm praising. It's not so. I have never seen anybody like Nutan in my life. Though we made only one film together, but our relationship lasted till the end. And I have never seen someone like Nutan. 9.30 shooting means she's 9.30 at the set, full with makeup, complete with makeup. It's not the coming to the studio. 9.30 she used to be inside the floor with full knowledge what she has to do, what was the continuity of her dress, what was the continuity of the action. I have never met someone like Nutan in my life. It's not that she is no more there, she is always there with me. As an actress, how did you see her? She's a very sensitive actress, very serious. I have never met an artist with such intricate knowledge about film editing. I used to explain to her from which dialogue I'm cutting the shot. She will maintain the continuity in that, that portion, like that. Another person that comes to mind is Balraj Sani, who we all appreciate. He's a very good actor. What would you say about him as an actor and somebody you worked with? Well, Balraj Sani is almost was a part of myself. He was so close to me and my family. I was so close to him and his family. I used to spend every weekend in this Juhu, where he used to stay, um, Theosophical Society. I used to spend with my daughters every um, Sunday there. It was almost a family affair. I never felt his Bolras and he was a friend of mine. And with Dobi Gazamin also we worked together. Rishita, one thing I remember about Bolras Sani is his dialogue delivery. Very natural and very, was that the way he spoke or was that, you know, something he did for the camera? You see, Motilalji, Bolras Sani, they changed, you know, uh, the concept of acting in films. They were never melodramatic, never theatrical. Modi Bhaiya, for instance, I have learned so much from him about acting. When I joined, I knew the technicalities, but I, I, am, I also come from stage, so I knew something about acting. But film acting, I learned from these people. I learned from Dilip Kumar, Raj Kapoor, Varrashani, all these, from all these people, Mati Bhaiya. I learned what is film acting. I learned about acting. So they were Mati Bhaiya, Varrashani, they were natural actors. They needn't take help of a big, pro, I mean, high-prone dialogues, or they could create drama even from ordinary sentences. Now, when you took to direction in a, in a big way, you know, your experience as an editor, did that help you or...? Oh, yeah, of course. Because I never used to overshoot. I used to shoot a film within 40 reels. I made Anand in 28 days within 32 reels. Because I knew this much I need. And I will shoot only that much. So your graduation from editor to uh, director helped? Uh, my graduation is from editor to script writer, then to mm, direction. And an editor should have intimate knowledge of script writing. That was realized in late part of my life. When I became a very successful director, I didn't give up editing. 
I used to edit, I used to go to South and edit films. They used to invite me to edit their films. Then my knowledge of script writing came to great help. For instance, I edited the film Chemin, which got President's gold medal, Ramu Kariyat. Ramu took me to Madras, gave me all the rush he said, do whatever you want. I said, Ramu, you have followed book, page one, page two, page three. I don't want to do that. I will make an arrangement, I reshuffle the whole first four reels. If you dislike, I will put it back the way you wanted to do it. He said, you do it. And I did it the way I thought, I, I have not read that novel. So I thought, I am looking at the film. So he approved of the whole thing. Then there were many dissolves. I said, Ramu, in color film, dissolves of 70 dissolves will ruin the film. He said, what can you do? We have to show the change of time, change of place. I said, you give me 500 feet of film. I went to the seashore, took waves crashing, and I used them as transition. Because it was a seaside story, it mixed with that uh, whole atmosphere. So one should have the knowledge, a film editor should have the knowledge of script writing. As an editor, uh, editor Rishita, you've seen a lot of changes in the, on the editing table. Oh, right? Now I can think you don't need the knowledge of script writing. The present day film, when I see, you should know how to make it faster. That's all. What are other changes that you have seen as an editor, you know? Uh, changes are bound to happen. Things are becoming fast, faster and fastest. You know, how fast you can go into narrating a story. Uh, and you don't bother about sentiment, emotion, or this. You have, must have some songs, some dance, some acrobats doing it. That's all that is happening. But this is, it happens every age, this has happened. Now, uh after Musafa Ya Anari, now the character of uh, Mrs. D'Souza, Mame Didi, and the matron Anand, all three similar, played by Lalita Pavar. Can you tell us a little about uh, this character? Well, I didn't believe in the, any religion per se. I believed my God is inside me, inside my conscience is my God. So I knew what is happening all around me. So I, in my films, in many of my films, you will find characters which are Christian, which are Sikh which are Muslims, they are very sympathetic characters. Like um, Anand, Johnny Walker did that, Isabai Suratwala, who was a my very, famous, very dear friend of mine, was my sound recordist. He is no more. So he did that character. Without underlining, he, um, underlining he is a Muslim, or without underlining, she is a Christian or someone is a Sikh. Like say, Satta Kam, I heard Paul Mahindra doing that role. I use this character. Now, once you have identified a particular character, if, I, if you are taking Lalita Power as an artist, why give another name when she'll be wearing almost the same dress, same mannerism, same thing? So I retain the same name, Mrs. Disa, in all the three films. Uh, you think that helped her, uh, the character, to maintain interest or, you know? No, they were made after a tremendous gap. They were not made, you say, just one after other. Probably Anadi and Mehmdidi was made, eh? Anand was made long after. People forget, forgot that time, what was in Anadi or what was in Mehmdidi. What was it about Lalita Pava that you know... Uh, Fantastic. Uh, the artist of olden days, I will narrate you an incident of Lalita Bhai. Lalita Bhai's role in Anadi was very small role, hardly four days work. But when I started working, I found this lady is so involved. So Indaraj Anand, Indaraj and myself, we went on expanding the role and she falls on that glass window, glass door, and gets hurt and loses her consciousness. Now, when I was telling Lalita Bhai, Lalita Bhai speaks slowly like this. She used to tell me, Dada, phir se bolie, Dada, phir se bolie. And then she started panting. I said, what happened? She said, I have developed fever. And believe me, I am not exaggerating. I touched her forehead. She was having at least 103, 104 fever. She developed it while working on the scene. Then she told me, Rishida, she used to call me Rishida, though she is older than me. She said, Rishida, please, don't, if you don't find this shot is not uh, going properly, cut it, don't take it till the end. Because, you know, I am having fever. I said, Rishida, you remember, na? you didn't fall on the glass. You just fall on the door. I will cut to the lawyer. I will give a sound of glass breaking. And she will come and I will show that you have fallen on the glass. You, you should be careful. Yes, yes, I know it, I know it. But don't, you cut it if you don't like that. It was one shot. She comes and falls on the glass. I told that you just fall on that swing door. I will cut to the shot of the lawyer and give the sound. I told my cameraman, she is going to fall on the glass giant. And I said, no. 
I said, I tell you, she is going, she will not listen to anybody. You keep your camera steady. Follow her wherever she goes. That is my premonition. I told Radhija Bhai, you remember now, be careful, you just hold that door. Yes, yes, Dada, I remember. It. And she did exactly what I thought. She came with both the hands, she banged on the glass, camera went with her, she fell in the ground, and the whole palm was cut into bits. That, that, those were the dedication. Mm, that Radhija Bhai is Radhija Bhai. Mm. 